Aloha, my internet family. How are you doing? Welcome back to Practical Printing. I am Joe, because Chris is busy unloading the truck, so I hijacked his camera because he also forgot to record the intro to the GTEC A20M video, so enjoy yourselves. Okay, so this is the GTEC A20M. It was sent to me by GTEC to assemble, build, possibly review, do some projects with, and get a chance to just show it off to you guys and, and have some fun with it. So before we unbox it, let's talk about a couple of the features and specs on this guy. Now those that follow me on Twitter and even here on YouTube have seen me unbox the A10M, the littler version of this printer, the one that's uh, kind of based off of an Ender 3 platform design. Um, this is a, a evolution of that. It is very similar feature-wise. It has the same geared extruders, the same hot end, shares a lot of the same properties, but it's in a self-contained base. Um, platform that it sits on and uh, still has the filament sensors, the power detect. It runs Marlin firmware. In fact, um, Thinky Head Scott has actively been involved with Gitech, um to develop and improve the firmware, the mixing firmware, uh, not only in the original 1.1.8 branch for it, which is available now, but he's also porting over their filament mixing algorithms and such and, and menu functionality and improving it and bringing that into the future Marlin 2.0. Now the other main difference between this and the A10M that I'm aware of is that this has a slightly larger build volume of 255 by 255 by 255 cubed. So it's slightly bigger than what you get out of the A10M. So let's crack it open and let's see what is inside the box. Okay, so I've already cut the tape here. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and pop it open. We'll see how it's packaged and what's inside. Uh, if you watched Jeff over at the Print 3D channel, he also uh, did an assembly build video. So there's uh, some really good takeaways from his as well. On the top, it looks like we have the instruction sheet, the quick start guide. Ooh. Quick start guide, and it is in English. So let's set that aside for now. And it's well packaged in some very thick one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine layers of foam there, and it looks like six millimeter layers, so pretty dang thick. And then we have the inside contents. So we'll start taking things out. Actually, it looks like this is two layers. So I'm just going to go through the top and then take the layers out. Uh, we have the one, two stepper motors. This is their, their geared version of an extruder that's upside down. So it's similar in design to the E3D Titan, but possibly not as refined. Um, it has the plastic geared motor, which needs a little lubrication. And the stepper's there. There's two of those. Um, they are identical. We have the upper gantry for the X, Y axis. I'll uh, wait to take that out. And we'll go through the bags. So we've got the Spool holder and hardware bag, and it looks like there are tools inside. We'll open up that in a bit and go through it in details. We have the filament sensors, a couple of extra screws here, an SD card, full-size SD card, mind you. We have the awesome Gitech mouse pad, and uh, these are really handy to have. 
what you can do is cut them up into four corners. Um, I mean, you can, of course, use them as a computer mouse pad, but you can cut it up into four squares and put it under the feet of your printer to quiet it down a bit. Power cord. And we have a bag that has uh, two Bowden tubes in it. Looks very thin. Um, some red and some yellow sample filament, a USB cord, and some zip ties. So let's put all this back in here for now. And I'm going to lift out this entire top platform and set it aside. Headphone alert. So we can get to the base. Take a peek underneath and make sure there's nothing missing from there. Don't fall. Okay, inside, let's see if I can get that up here a little bit closer for you. I see one change over the A10M that I'm liking here. We have the base and we have the bed with the um, the Anycubics version of the, I'm sorry, the Gitex version of the Anycubic plate. They call it their super plate. Um, those have been hit and miss for me on the A30 and the A10 and the A10N. But what's nice here as an improvement, on the previous models, these were always glued down, so you couldn't change it. What's nice here is that they did use binder clips to mount that, so you can actually flip it over and print on the bare glass side if you'd like, or replace it uh, with a flex plate or some other system. So here is our base. So let's go ahead and pull that out. I'm going to support it underneath and we're going to toss it aside and we'll set that aside. And there is our base. We have the, the motor on the back, on the front of the Y-axis we have the bearing plate and the belt going across end stop here in the back. This also, uh, ha as an upgrade to the A10M, has a full graphic LCD, so it has a larger size. And of course it's pre-cabled, which you can't see if I keep pulling it back and forth. It's pre-cabled, so all you do is pull these out to your different motors. Let's flip it over and take a look at the other side. Okay, so there's our SD connector, uh, I'm sorry, SD port. We'll flip it over here. So the control board appears to be in here underneath this fan. It is open, so you can access it. And it looks like four screws, and you can get at that should you need to adjust the stepper voltages and such. Um, one thing, well, one thing I'm not, I like this style, I like that it's contained. One thing that I'm not a huge fan on, of here, just thinking out loud, is from a thermal design perspective, heat rises. Granted, this is the bottom. Uh, so I don't know if this fan is blowing and up and it's going to vent out the sides or um, if it's trying to extract heat but it seems slightly counterintuitive. We have the power supply here. Everything is on crimps. Let me slide that down in. Everything is crimped and solid. And that is sealed up, so there's no exposed AC electrical. You can get to the 110 volt switch on the side here, which is currently set for 230, so I'm going to grab a rusty tweaker out of the drawer and I'm going to flip that to 110 now before I forget to do it. And then on the other side here we have the USB connection and a power switch and the IEC socket. So let's flip that back over. Um, one thing that would have been nice, and I've noticed with the power cord that was included, 
It is a straight IEC connector, which means it goes in like that. Um, it would have been nice to have a right angle power cord so that it can go straight towards the back there, but I've got those, so that might be something I swap on here later. All right, so let's break out all of the pieces here. Let's bring this back out for a more global view. There we go, it's sideways, but that's about the best I can give you. And let's break out all of the pieces here. And something just fell, so we'll need to see what that was. There is the, the hot end in the chassis. Um, this is the newer, more pointed nozzle that the new A10Ms included, have included. And one thing I've liked about all of these printers is they have a BL touch mount or a 3D touch um, is, is Gitex cloned version. And there are, there is a header here. I'm not sure if you can see that. But there's pins there where it's pre-pinned. So to, to install a BL touch on this, you basically two screws to hold it on here, adjust your height, plug it into the five pins on the back there, flash the firmware with the BL touch firmware, and it's done. So let me set this down, and I'm going to see, uh, stop the camera and see what fell. Okay, I think we're safe. I think I found the screw that fell out, but I'm not exactly sure where it goes, so I'm hoping it's an extra. Um, I checked and I didn't see any that looked obviously uh, missing or that they'd loosened up and fell out in shipping. So uh, we're going to set that aside and, and hope that either it shows up or, uh, or that we don't need it. So in the short term, I went ahead and pulled everything out of the box and have it here. What I have yet to show you is what's in the, the bag here and what we have are the two brackets for the spool holder holders plural the spool holders themselves the uh, oh, you can't see anything can you? there we go spool holders themselves we have a, uh, a backup screw kit which I'm assuming that means extras so we're going to set that aside and we have our tools that we're going to need to put this bad boy together let's dump all this out there's also some extra pieces I believe in here um, and some other little goodies so we've got an extra nozzle and you can see how pointy that guy is it's very very pointy We've got uh, two different size spanners, wrenches. Hard to find the camera. There we go. A couple of Allen wrenches, hex keys. We've got one, two, three, four, five little T nuts, and those are going to be for putting on the spool holder, I believe. So we're going to set those aside. Again, we have the, the filament sensors and the, the main bolts. Now, there's really like four bolts to put this thing together. There's two in either side here that hold the frame on. Um, and then there's two each for the spool holders. So let's see if we can throw it together really quickly. Uh, they also include an acupuncture needle and a, uh, these stainless rods, which are really great for... Um, for clearing jams. All right, so let's set those aside and let's see if we can put this together. So what's gonna happen, we're gonna set the extruders aside as well. What's going to happen is this is going to bolt on here like this. Two bolts in either side. So what we're going to do is I'm going to set that here I'm going to tilt this up on its side and I'm going to find something to set it on. Probably the foam box here. 
I'm going to try to line up where these holes are with this lip here. So that way, when we put this on, actually we have a little bit more room to do it. It can sit like that. There we go. Let me see if I can get this guy. So there's two holes here, here, and then two holes down here. Those are going to be these screws, which I should have taken out first. So let me... So what I'm going to do is I'm going to feed one, one of them through so I can use that to try to find the hole on the side here. Hopefully this side lines up much easier because we already have it in the general vicinity. So I'm going to get that one started. That one started. Now I'm going to flip it on its top like this. And unfortunately you don't have a good camera view of this, but that allows it to uh, easier access to all of them. And I'm going to go ahead and tighten all four of those up. And that's it. Now we can flip this thing over. It's not very heavy. We can move this out of the way. And that is your printer. Now we just need to mount the extruders, uh, and I was incorrect, there's actually a couple more bolts than I thought, the extruders, and the spool mounts on the top, or the uh, spool holders, and connect all of the, the wiring up here. Okay, so our next step is going to be to mount the two extruders, and they have the T-nuts on the bottom, so you just want to line them up straight like this, and they're just going to set right there on the top like that. Um, we'll line up the other one. And it'll also drop on the top. And then you just have to figure out the appropriate distance to, uh, to mount them. So if the spool holder mounts next to it, let's say on the outside, um, you probably want to get these as close as possible. It doesn't really give you directions on how far apart they go. Um, their directions actually show the spool holders between them, which would position them like so. So I don't think there's an exact position that they need to be, but roughly there and there. It has a minimum width. I'll just use my hand like so and Try to match up hand width on either side, and we're just going to tighten those four screws. Like that. All right, those are mounted. Now, okay, so the next step is to mount these spool holders. And you can tell that there's three holes on there because you can mount it in two different orientations. With the A10, originally, a lot of people like to mount it in this orientation. Uh, so that it could feed over to the side. For the the M's, they would typically go in this orientation. So you would use the two two holes that are closest together from each other. So we're just going to take, going to grab four of these. Now these are smaller. Um, these are smaller. T nuts or the or the screws are anyway. So I'm just going to take the T nut off, put the screw through with my finger, and get the T nut just started on it, like one or two threads. And then we're going to do the second one the same way. 
Okay, then we're going to make sure that these are lined up straight like that. And we're going to mount these like so. And we're just going to tighten them down. Again, you want to make sure that the wing turns. And that's held on there snugly. We're going to repeat that for the second bracket, also using the front two holes. Okay, those are both snug. Last step to these spool holders are these guys and they're threaded on both ends so it doesn't matter which one you use you want to tighten one side up loosen the other side slide it through the hole like so and just tighten that down do the same thing for the other side Now, I would position these back here, and we're going to try something. Um, let me grab a couple of spools. Okay, so before we go on, I'm, I grabbed a couple of spools, and these are just generics. This is an atomic PLA spool, and I want to fit it and just make sure that we have clearance. Uh, in this orientation. This is a ameline spool, one of my favorites. The spool wise, I really like it, just the way it looks. Uh, this is a matter hacker spool, and that fits nicely. And lastly, we have a really wide, um, this was a, a, I don't know what this was. This is a wider one, so this actually doesn't fit completely on there, but it, it's not going to come off. Um, but if you routinely print with wide spools, you might consider getting some PVC pipe or something and replacing this little piece with something wider. But the big thing is I wanted to check for the clearance to, to make sure that when the spool's on there, it wasn't going to hit the stepper driver and that there was clearance. So the spool's film it's going to go over the top. Okay, next thing we're going to do assembly wise is we are going to put on the filament sensors. These are really tiny. They have a little tiny micro connector in the back. The filament passes through the hole and one unique thing they have is this ball mount uh, that you can't see so that as your filament pivot pivots it can pivot with it. It's a really clever idea. That's just going to go on these screws. So I'm going to rotate this so I can get to those. We're going to find the appropriate size hex wrench. We're going to take out these long screws that are really tight. And we're just going to put the screw back in through the hole on here. And tighten it back up. And see how that ball pivots. Um, some people love the filament sensors. Some people hate them. On, on this, uh, some people feel like they get in the way. What I don't mind is that if you don't need it, you can drop it off to the side like that, um, which you can't see from that angle, but you can basically fold it over. If you don't need it, you can fold it over and just leave it aside um, either way and just, you know, bypass it. You can turn it off in the firmware. So it's not a huge deal either way. All right, that's done. Uh, last mechanical thing that we have to do here is connect our 
PTFE tubes and we're just going to push those in. I'm also going to make sure that they're seated all the way down in here. sure that those are don't conflict with each other make sure that one is also seated and we are good there so the last thing to do is to connect up the wiring let's see if we can turn that around it's all labeled and self-explanatory we just need a pair of snips to cut the different pieces off and away we go. Um, for example this is labeled Y end stop so it will plug in right there. Let me grab a pair of snips. We'll cut off this zip tie. You do want to think about your wiring before you connect it so that way you're not blocking anything for example like the heat bed. I do like the hard strain relief here. Let me get you a close-up of that uh, if I can. As close as I can. On the bed here there's a hard strain relief for the... Cut that so I don't cut my finger off. It's a hard strain relief for the heated bed here. So we're just going to plug these in as this is the Z motor, ZM it's labeled. Okay, so we have two cables here. This is going to go up to our X, X motors, I'm sorry, our um, extruders. It's labeled extruder 1 and extruder 0. So when you slice, extruder 0 is going to be your extruder 1. So in this case, it's going to be right is 1, 2 is left, even though it's E1, 0 and E1. You also have on here, let's see if I can get that on camera. This is that little tiny connector, little tiny, tiny, tiny connector. And these just are going to plug into the back of each end stop. I'm sorry, each uh, filament detector. Um, it's a very tiny connector, very tiny wire, and it just connects like that. Let's get that angled up there. Just connects like so. We'll do that with the other one here. are done. Um, I could have possibly ran that through here, you know, or in, in the middle between there, and uh, somehow dress this a little bit better. But before I dress these cables up, it did include wire ties for it, but before I dress the cables up, I want to use the printer a bit and find out the, the movements and the motions on which way it goes so that that can best be determined. This is our extruder plug, it's a single, I'm sorry, our hot end plug, it's a single plug and it's just going to go, uh, let's go over the front, no, not that way, hmm, yeah, let's just go this way, across the back and it just, again, it's, it's keyed so it plugs in. You're going to check these other connectors on the little hot end breakout board to make sure everything is seated. There's three fan connectors and the hot end power. Um, so let me see if I can get you a close up of this. This is one thing that I do not care for that Gitech is doing um, on the A series printers is that inside the wheels here, these wheels uh, for the V-slot are typically made for two bearings. They're only putting a single bearing centered on it and then using longer spacers to uh, position it. 
Um, if you use the printer a lot, it may be worth, I mean, that may shorten the life of the bearings and it may be worth lengthening those up. The other thing I want to check before we go too much further is the belt tension. So down here, that one seems to be fine. And then up here on the x-axis, the belt also seems to be fine. If you needed to tighten it, you just loosen these two screws, pull it out. Um, you can use a, a screwdriver or a tweaker in here as leverage to create a little bit of tension and then tighten it up. Just slide it in through the hole in the top. So the last thing we're going to do is we're going to peel this off here. And we're going to do this. There we go. If you hadn't done it already, you want to check the back here. Uh, I'm going by feel. You want to check the back here and make sure that you have your power supply set to 110 volts or 220 volts as appropriate for you. And congratulations, at this point your printer is fully assembled. Now they used five clamps on the bed. What I've noticed is that they, we want to take these off really quick. it's easier to get access to the binder clips from the side and the back if you pull it back. You can't see it in the picture well, but they do have the large nuts down here for leveling the bed, which makes leveling the bed easier. And with those removed, your build plate just lifts off. So this side of the bed um, is their, excuse me, this side of the bed is their super plate. The back side of the bed should be glass, but it actually looks like, there's adhesive on there and paper. So it's not stuck down I want to ask about that because um, they don't tell you to, in the instructions here, they don't tell you anywhere to remove that, that tape, but I want to come back and ask questions about that because I'm not sure if it's a good idea to have that tape and adhesive on there. Uh, granted, I prefer that it wasn't stuck down, but I'm not sure if it's a good idea to have that heat or uh, to put heat on the, the paper and the adhesive on the bed. So I'm going to pose that question and come back um, and, and find out the answer to that. But for now, we're just going to clamp it on. What I may opt to do, you want to make sure that your clips don't hit anywhere. That side clip would keep it from going forward all the way. that so you can't put a clip on the side where they had it without removing the spring tab so we're gonna go with four that's pretty much the standard for most beds that use binder clips let me grab power and let's see if we can juice this thing up quick okay so I was grabbing the power cord and getting it plugged in also triple check to make sure that I was set to 110 AC and I grabbed a couple of spools of filament uh, I, this is the Filament 1 Pro Select Glint Blue. And this is the Filament 1 Pro Select Glint Gray. So we have something to test it out with. Um, you do have to remember about these mixing extruders, you have to have filament loaded in both sides, even if you're only printing with one color. 
If you don't, it will back feed up the other side um, due to pressure rather than coming out the tiny nozzle. The filament will try to start following the path of least resistance and you'll get jams. So you ready? I positioned the camera here on the LCD as best we can, so hopefully it'll show it. Let's power this bad boy up. It comes up. We have Marlin 1.1.8, a 20M ready. Now normally at this part, I would check to see if there is newer firmware for the printers. And as I said early on, I know that Thinky Head, uh, Scott from Marlin, had been working with, with Gitech to make, uh, improve the firmware for this. So seeing that MX there tell, is telling to me that this may already have the newer firmware, but let's go through and check. The one way that I can tell is by checking the mixer controls and seeing that we have toggle mix and gradient. The toggle mix is a new control that was added by Scott and the gradient mix is here as well. Also look at the about printer. Let's see what it shows us. Printer info. 1.1.8 and the date was 12-25-2017, which uh, I believe was probably the original date of release there, not of the Marlin 1.1.8, not this version. There's our board information. A little information on the thermistors our min temp and min and max. And our main. So let's go ahead and let's try to home this guy and make sure everything moves. Do an auto home. And it looks like it it homed. Uh, it also looked like it homed much lower than the height of the bed. You can see the nozzle here is way low. So based on that, I am going to crank these down as low as it goes. And we'll level the bed quick. back we're going to go ahead and do a test with this paper on the back of the glass but I do want to uh, I do want to pose that question to the community at large and possibly to Keytech to get their opinion And I know that camera there on the screen doesn't show you guys much other than what's floating, but it actually helps me that I can see it on my computer monitor here. Okay, so we're going to go to prepare. I'm going to set it to disable steppers so I can slide the bed forward. I'm going to slide this out and see how much clearance we have. So I did get it way below the bed, tightening it up there. So we need to bring that back up a lot. bring up the back and the front. I know I can't get it exactly equal, but we want to get it close. See if we can get that 
back up near where the nozzle's at. All right. We are close. I'm going to use the provided instruction sheet as a reference, and we're going to go one quarter at a time until it just grabs. We will slide this over here slowly. Again, you don't want to slide it fast because you'll feed back from the steppers into the, the frame and that's not good. Just get a slight grab, push the bed forward. Got a long way to bring this up back here. Slight grab. Let's slide it over here to the right. a little bit harder to get access to. Okay, now as you're doing the screw, you want to avoid actually touching the bed or the X rod here because you don't want to put any pressure on them. get our slight grab. Now we'll go back and start with the front because you know the other ones were so far off but those are now going to be too high. Used to doing this from the front of the printer so kind of weird being on this side of it. So there's our slight grab. We'll slide it over here. Slight grab. That's like way too low. So we'll tighten that up. Slide it over here. There we go. Okay, I'm going to go through at this point and hit prepare. We're going to home it again. And this time I'm going to use the level corners option in the menu here. Level corners. That's going to move the nozzle over the corner to the where it should be. And we're going to do the same thing again. Now, the, the reason you want to do it this way for your final tuning is your motors are engaged versus free floating, how we disabled them before. So that got us, that got us in the general ballpark, but we want to get it exact at this point. And you don't want gravity pulling your stepper motor down on you because without the stepper motor engaged gravity will pull the x-axis down ok 
Okay. Next corner. I'm going to go ahead and put the paper underneath. And that's a little bit tight. Slight grab. We'll go to the next corner. Go to the next corner. That one's a little low. And I believe the next position is the center of the bed. Nope, it goes back up to the front. Check this front left corner again. I think uh, the firmware could use a little bit of adjustment to move these points inward a little bit. I might make that suggestion to Scott. I mean, we'll check these back to you again really quick. Remember I said what I, I didn't want to lace these up until we knew where they are going to go. What I want to do with this one is there's two holes in the back here that you can't see, but I'm just going to use a, a zip tie to basically take this and pull it horizontally across, zip tie it loosely here so it has enough travel to go up and down, uh, but it gets it out of the way of the print. So after we finish leveling, I will do that quickly. And one more corner and we're gonna call it done. There we go. All right, let's home this sucker again. Go to our prepare menu. We go auto home. And we're gonna let that sit while I grab a zip tie to tuck these cables out of the way. I'm actually going to power that off. And that's nozzle is clipping this side. What is it clipping? Okay, so it was clipping the uh, the clippy clip. All right, zip ties. They were in the filament bag. Okay, so I, like I said, I'm just going to feed this in here, like so. I may do something different later, but for now, I'm going to make sure that we have enough room to reach it all the way across. And I'm going to put 
up a zip tie like so. Snip that with my flush cut so that I don't cut my arm. This cable we're just going to leave loose for now. Uh, again, maybe it can go over here or something at some point or, or get traced through here. Undecided, but so we are leveled. We are good. So let's go ahead and I'm going to roll this up by hand just a few clicks off the bed. Let's slide this over here. Let's try to go ahead and get some filament loaded. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to prepare, preheat PLA, and we're going to preheat just the hot end to get started. Remember this was our extruder zero. So that's our one. So we're going to make one blue. So we're going to pop the filament spool on there. This is also slightly too wide, but I can loosen this coupling nut up a bit like so. And I think it'll fit. Yep, just barely, but that will sit in there. All right, I'm going to take and snip this off so that we have a fresh, nice angle. I'm going to feed it down through the filament detector into the PTFE tube, like so. I'm going to try to get a good angle on it so that it feeds down, and it should theoretically feed down into that tube. So there's a quick troubleshooting lesson for you on the build, but the reason that we had to do that is the way these extruders and all extruders work, the gear inside, there's a straight path through. So it comes in to the little tube at the top, has a straight path through that's broken by the gear, and then comes straight out the bottom. Where your filament has an arc to it, so as it goes in, it's trying to curl this way. So what I had to do was put pressure here to kind of arc the filament out to be able to, to hit the hole at the bottom of the gear to be able to push it through. And if you ever have trouble doing that, all you have to do is remove the PTFE tube and push it in. For this first one, since we want to get these loaded quick, I'm just going to squeeze the lever and push it down. As far as it goes, we're going to do the same thing with this side. Okay. And since I haven't had time to clean this bed, since I didn't get a chance to clean the bed before doing this, normally you'd wipe it with Ipro isopropyl alcohol and scrub it with a uh, Scotch-Brite a little bit just to scuff it slightly so it'll adhere better. Um, since I haven't had a chance to do that to keep this quick, I'm just going to use some Magigoo. I'm going to put down a thin layer of Magigoo right here in the middle. I'm going to relocate this camera up here so you can see the bed. Okay, so we have the magic goo on. Let's slide the bed backwards so we can see the screen. We're gonna turn it back on. I'm going to pop the LCD card in. It only fits one way and that is with the contacts towards the front. We're gonna put it in, it'll tell us card inserted. 
I'm going to go down to print from SD card and see what's, of course I'm upside down, print from SD card. We have two files. We've got dog and lizard. So let's try the lizard. That's a dual color print, if I recall from others I've seen. We'll let it home, we'll let it heat up, and we'll see if we can get it to start printing. It's up to 37. Of course, I said quickly, and look how slow it's going. 38, and that's heating the bed. Now it is fighting the ambient temperature out here in the garage, and the hot end will heat up after that. Theory says we should have extruded some plastic first rather than just loading it the way I did, but hopefully this will print a perimeter and it'll be fine. Bed's up to temp at 65. The hot end is heating up to 195. Uh, for this filament, I actually want to go a little bit hotter, so I'm going to go into the menu here and adjust that and tell it to heat up to about 210 kind of override the g-code that's on the SD card and it's moving see a little bit of filament coming out it's making an outline to be a little tall, so we're going to go tune, let's see, went to control, and tune, here we go, we got baby step Z, down and it looks like it's printing Although that filament color looks to be almost black there um, from my side, but I believe that is turning, it's turning the blue. So I'm guessing that's old filament that we didn't really purge out first by properly loading it, and that's on me. Um, test print purposes, it's no harm, no foul as long as it prints. Okay, so there you have it. That is the GTEC or GTEC, I'm not exactly sure how they say it, but the, the GTEC A20M mixing printer. As we said, it's just a couple of screws, a very quick assembly. It's very sturdy. Uh, you can probably pick up the sound level from my, my lav mic. It's not quiet, but it's not as loud as other printers. Um, I can hear that that front fan just kicked in. Oh, no, it has not. That's the fan down in the control box. Uh, it's slightly larger than the A20M. Uh, obviously, it's um, as far as build volume and with the integrated base, which makes it a lot more stable. Gives it a little bit more weight on the bottom. Dual geared extruders, uh, E3D-ish style, Titan style. Filament runout sensors. The super plate, which we need to check and find out if we should remove that paper or not. And the full graphic LCD, which the A10M did not have. So now that we know it's printing, I will leave you with that. If you like the videos here on practical printing, please ring that bell down below, hit the subscribe so that you're notified when future videos come out and we'll see you next time on practical printing. Aloha.